Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. things which you will learn the life will change you can find your seats <coughs> if you're ready to begin <laughs> Alright y'all, we about to go in and look. For those who might not know, for those who might not know, we're in the last days. I truly believe that God has raised Marquise, because ultimately I can ultimately only speak for myself. Does everybody understand that? You know men and women <coughs> God that do their thing most best believe. But ultimately, you can only speak for yourself because you stand naked before yourself, before God for your own. That's why the scripture says, see, got your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. I truly believe God has raised me up to, and I'm going to make this claim as I always do. I never say anything to lift myself up. I say it to give you a basis of understanding who I am. Therefore, if you begin to use empathy, you can see who you are. Does that make sense? Because yeah. you got to understand your purpose in God and why your mama met your daddy. Does that make sense? The reason why you're here, ultimately, is not a college degree. Ultimately, is not to be no super millionaire. Ultimately, is not to have these things. Whatever the case is, those things are utilized by God to ultimately fulfill the will that he has designed for your life. Understood? Yeah. So check this out. I believe God raised Marquis up to, to raise warriors up. Warriors. Anybody that really stay around me when I'm ministering, I don't play no games. It's too many games that's been played in church, too many games that's been portrayed on TV, too many games that's always been played. Then as Americans, we get all soft, you understand? We ain't ready for no pain, we ain't ready for no problems and nothing like that. You understand what I'm saying? So this message that's going to go forth today is going to change your life if you let it. Because like I was thinking before and I'm going to say throughout this message, you can't change nobody. So stop trying. God can't even change nobody unless they allow him. That's what we got to remember. You can pray for somebody until you blow in the face. Unless they activate their own will to let God in, it means nothing. Need scripture to go for it? These people have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. They deny the power to come in and change their life. But they had a form, though. Yeah, I go to church. I know God. Praise God. All. Uh-uh. We ain't got time for that. We ain't got time for that. So, technically, the power line is on, but... Even if you would never been on the power line, power it is an acronym which stands for preparing operational warriors to endure resistance. One more time, God gave me that. I don't come up with nothing. I don't come up with this stuff. Power, P O W E R, is an acronym which stands for preparing operational warriors to endure resistance. So what that means, preparing, which means to get ready. Let's let's go ahead and dissect that. Preparing, which means to get ready, to make oneself ready. Operational, that means being able to be operated, having use. You understand what I'm saying? You can have a car, if that junk don't work, it means nothing to you. Put yourself in the same position. <laughs> if you ain't working, how God using you? 
You understand what I'm saying? Warriors. You already know a warrior is a person who is fierce in battle. A fierce individual in battle. Endure to, to stand firm in. To put up with. To struggle in. To stand strong in. To endure. To put up. The last word, resistance. So we preparing operational warriors to endure resistance. That's what we get ready to do right here. Are y'all warriors? Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm going to do it one time. Are y'all warriors? Yes. yes. Yeah. For real. You got to change your perception, your perspective on Christianity. You feel what I'm saying? We're not a religion. This is what a man of God just blessed me with, and it made sense. I was looking at it the whole time, but I never saw it for what it was. We're not a religion. We're a government. Amen. Christianity, this is going to change your whole perspective. I'm meditating on it, but it hit me when I saw it. Christianity is not a religion. It is a government. Why? The kingdom has come. That's what Jesus said. The kingdom. So we represent the kingdom. The kingdom ain't a religion. It's a government. Whenever you think of a kingdom, you think of the king. You think of his council. You think of military or the army. You think of all that. I was an army soldier. I did nine years in the military. I didn't represent a religion. Just like if you're a soldier now, what you represent? You represent the United States. Say the word. Government. Second Timothy 2. But we're going there. Second Timothy 2, chapter 3 says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So that's so the, the correlation is there right away. So we got to stop looking at ourselves as followers of a religion and start looking at yourself as an ambassador of a government, which is the kingdom of heaven. Heaven is a real place with real orders, with real rules, with real people, with real spirits, with real whatever else is there. We got to change our minds. We got to. So I want to start off with a quote, because I ain't even got started. If you thought that was started, that's not started. <laughs> it's a guy named Eric Thomas, the hip-hop preacher. I listen to this brother a lot. But I did, not to get into the aspect of motivational, you know, stuff, but he does. A lot of the stuff he says, but what I do, I apply it to my walk with God. I apply it to the business that God has given me, which will ultimately bring his glory. Does that make sense? It's a, it's, a, it's a quote he utilized, and I want to give it to y'all. He said, only those who are willing to risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. <laughs> one more time. Listen, listen to this. I want you to follow in Jesus' name. I thank you for these brothers and sisters. I rebuke any spirits of error, any spirits of self-righteousness, any spirits of double-mindedness and fear in the name of Yeshua. I come against you right now through the living blood of Jesus. I break your power off the minds of these people. Lord God, circumcise their ears and their hearts to receive a word, Lord. That this word will go deep into their hearts, God, on good ground. That they may reap a harvest, Lord, Psalm Lord, 30, 60, and some even 100, God. <coughs> Hallelujah, God. Get them eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord says to the churches, God. Hallelujah. That they will go forth and apply what is going forth. That they may be strong soldiers and warriors for your kingdom in Jesus' name. Only those who are willing. Factor of your soul. <coughs> willing. You got to be willing. Only those who are willing to risk going too far <coughs> can possibly find out how far one can go. So if you playground with the, with the gospel, if you playground with the Holy Spirit, if you play ground with all that God has given you, you ain't going to find out how far you could have went. But the difference in this in your business or the difference of this in, in, in your family life or something, the difference of this, it can cost you your eternity. Did you get that? The difference in this, if we don't go as hard as we need to go in God, it can cost us. Somebody asked me how. Because you might not really know. How? How? Because if you're not where we need to be, and I understand you is a, is a, is a general term. I'm, I'm definitely speaking to myself. If we're not where we need to be in God, when everything begins to shift completely, and the Christ being revealed, you know, FEMA camps, super famines, super storms, earthquakes, all the stuff that's really going to happen at a greater level. If we're not where we need to be in God, and ultimately it can cost us. 
Because if you ain't standing firm and strong in God, when the situation comes where you might have to take the mark, you might take the mark. I've heard of two people already say that they'll take the mark. You just, what? They were serious. They, they, they. It's a woman. I talked to a friend of mine. I know her personally. So let's say this is you and this your sister. So you know that you talked to your sister in New York, and your sister said, I got all these kids. How I'm going to feed them? Yeah, I might have to take the hmm. mark. <laughs> so she has taken Mark to feed her children to her own damnation. You see the seriousness of this? So let's get into this. We're going to talk about a few things real quick. One thing, the key thing I'm going to discuss is love. The key thing I'm going to discuss is love. But I want y'all to understand this. Which way, Holy Ghost? Where are we going with this? Check this out. Let me see a show of hands. Who believe in Jesus Christ? Word. Okay. Let me put your hand down. Let me see a show of hands that believe that Jesus is God. Be honest. Be honest. Okay. Put your hand down. Let me see a show of hands. That believe that they are saved. Believe in. That you are saved. Okay. You can put your hands down. This is the next one. Let me see it. Uh, please be honest. Please be honest. <clears throat> Let me see a show of hands of them that believe God's power can change their life. So that's enough. So we're gonna go after it? Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna press in. Yeah. Yeah. See it's easy no disrespect. Who whoever said of course I ain't even look. It's easy at times, watch this because this is not directed as you, but I've noticed it's dealing with people. It's easy to say, of course. It's easy to just raise your hand because everybody raise your hand. It's easy to do all these things where everybody else around, but when we're in the heat of the battle, what are we doing? I'm going through it in my life right now. It's real in the field right now. But do you see it? Because you know what happened? Marquise decided, I'm going to run this thing full speed. I ain't looking back, bro. You got to get in your heart and mind and your soul that no matter what happens, you will serve God. And I can honestly say out of my own mouth over the last five days, Satan heard me. He heard me say it. And the pain and the pressure has increased that fast. That fast. So what I want to share with you, do not be afraid. I don't care if your best friend leave you. If you're married, I don't care if your husband leave you. I don't care if your wife leave you. We got to count it all. I'm serious, man. I didn't come to play or impress you, but only to impress upon you the severity and the magnitude of a true Christian lifestyle. Are y'all getting this? Yeah. This ain't soft. I know it's not. I know it's not easy to bear. Please understand. I know it's not easy to bear. But I understand that the church, as well as the movies, as well as this world, which belongs to Satan, has painted a picture. In which we think everything is easy. But when you look in this book, when was it ever easy? Jesus was called the man of sorrows. Come on, bro. The man of sorrows? <laughs> like I just told somebody I was ministering yesterday. I don't glorify pain and sorrow and hurt and agony. But I'm really learning now. It's the best way. It's the best way. Watch this. I read this last night in the heat of some hell. While I was going through one in the morning, I just retreated to where I retreated to, and I laid on the bed. Well, whatever I laid on. And I was like, <laughs> sometimes you just got to laugh, bro. Because the higher you go, the more the fire going to get turned up. 
and I got some other things. We're going to really build a base. We're going to really build a base. I'm going to share with y'all the soul, the healing of the fractured, shattered soul, which is extremely important, traumatization, and how the soul is afflicted by demon spirits. And we're going to also mainly talk about love, so I'm about to move through this quickly. We're going to talk about love being the absolute most important determining factor of you making it to heaven. See, I'm going to go to the root point. I ain't going to dance around it, y'all. The, 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 the absolute magnitude and severity of true God, divine love being the key that really gets you into heaven. And it's all scriptural. Amen? Amen. Look at what I read last night while I was broken. Like, really, is this going on? But it was. Watch this. Ecclesi write this down. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 3. Watch what the, ooh, look, look. Watch what the words say. I don't care who your pastor is. I mean, you know, a lot of y'all come sit up here, so it's a little different. But for those people that might be listening on the recording or wherever this is, because what's happened is happy church, that's what I call it. I got it from another man of God. Happy church will cause much sorrow in your life. But not the good sorrow right here, because you know what? To be truthful, most people can't take sorrow. And I'm seeing it. Most people so emotionally destroyed and jacked up that they blind as bats. <coughs> And it's sad. And I'm going to speak on that too. I'm going to speak on that too. I'm going to deal with some things. God going to deal with some things. Why? Because ultimately, I care where you go. I care about your soul. Y'all not numbers to me. I was called here because I believe God put it on a certain individual's heart to call me here. Because he know what y'all need. Because he know that the battle get ready to increase. And who ready for it? I said it straight out loud. I said, you know what? I'm going to rock till the wheels fall off. I don't care who walk on my life. I don't care who turn on me. I don't care if I get sick. I don't care. What's the word? This is my new mindset, y'all. What's the worst that can happen? I die. <laughs> I'm going to say that again because I don't think you heard me. You know what I'm saying? This is my new mindset. Romans 12, 2. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind by the reading of God's word. Be not conformed to this word. I apologize. I left that out. So Marquis new mindset. I'm going to rock even if I have to die, bro. What's the worst that can happen? I die. As long as I die in him, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I done been shot at before. I done almost drowned. I done been in car crashes. Now I'm rocking with God. I'm going to be scared to die now. Man, I was a little scared then because my soul knew I was going to hell. <laughs> no, what? My soul and my inside man knew I was going to hell. That's the difference. I'm scared to go to hell. Anybody scared to go to hell? <laughs> That's why. That's why. Let's go. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 3. Sorrow is better than laughter. What, what am I reading right here? What's this? Do we listen to man or we listen to this? Word. 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 And before I even finish, ensure that you take the stuff that I say and your pastor or anybody else that you listen to, take it to God in prayer and go read and study the scripture for yourself that you get the revelation. I give information. God gives revelation. Mm -hmm. Don't ever get it twisted. It may have been revealed to me, but until you get it for yourself, it's only a form of information. It's the Holy Spirit that reveals and takes you into all truth. Let's get it. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 3. Sorrow is better than laughter. Holy, what? Sorrow is better than laughter. For by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. Put that in your pipe and smoke that money. <laughs> Did you hear what God's word says? See, this is the sword that literally cuts you. You feel me? The scriptures say the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Any. Able to pierce the sun and separate. Is that all? Oh, my bad. Spirit and soul, bone and marrow. The spirit man is being separated from the soul. Because the soul more than likely is carnal and ain't been regenerated yet. Because our mission is to be have the soul regenerated to a fact that it's filled with God. You need scripture for that too? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, your soul. Then love your neighbor as yourself after you know this from. So our soul has been regenerated. It has to be. And that's what we're about to talk about. But I want you to read this because I'm going through this right now and I'm experiencing that this is true. 
we're going to repaint a new picture. We're going to repaint a new picture. Because the battle get ready to increase, y'all. And I want y'all to make it. Marquise wants you to make it. Why? Because the scripture said there will be a great falling away. And I always say, bro, what? Don't let it what? Don't let it be you. Don't let it be you. One more time. Sorrow is better than laughter for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. And I got scripture for that. You want, you want something that's going to really help you according to that? Watch this. Turn to Psalms 34. We're talking about the heart now. We're jumping right in it. Psalms 34. Oh, Father, I just thank you. I love y'all, man. I'm serious, man. I'm going to give it all I got every time, bro. Till they come lock me up. For real. I'm serious about this, y'all. And I want you to be. Don't look at this as Bible study. Look at this as training. Change your perspective. And watch your whole life change. Because when demons start walking in this dimension, what are you going to do? Call the pastor? Or are you going to let the Holy Spirit that's within you raise up and you rebuke it? When these real giants and things of this nature begin to walk, are we going to stand like Israel or are we going to stand up like David? <laughs> this real life, y'all. I know this is heavy right now. And this jacking some of you up. I can see it. But just bear with me, because I'm telling you, there is great glory. There is great glory. Great glory. Romans 8, 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Why? This is my part right here. Because the earnest expectation of the creature await the manifestation of the sons of God. I know who I am. I'm Marquise. So ask yourself, who am I? Right now. Say, who am I? Say it. You got to activate this. Say it. Who am I? Who am I? And think about that. <coughs> Are you the person you see in the mirror? Are you a divine being sent by the Father to fulfill an eternal mission and purpose? See the difference? See the difference? Forget how you were raised. How is God raising you now? Teacher of the gospel. Full of the Holy Ghost and fire. Y'all feeling that? Next level thinking, y'all. Come up. The Father says, come up. Come up. Come up. Come up here. God wants you up here. Don't try to bring him down there. Come up here. Amen. Psalm 34. Watch this. I sought, verse 4, I apologize. I know this heavy, y'all. I know this heavy. I know this heavy. I can feel it. Some of y'all just, just, just bear with me, man. This is all love. Trust me. This is all love. Amen? Amen. Check this out. We're going to start with verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. Did he say sometimes? All times. So my car just broke. Am I going to bless him? Yeah. yeah. My chair tripping, am I going to bless him? Yeah. I just got shot at five minutes ago, am I going to bless him? Yes. Yeah. I just found out my mama got cancer. Am I going to bless Hallelujah. 
Now I know what y'all need. I'm just a vessel, bro. That's it. Now I know what y'all need. And he know my keys ain't come to play. I came here and love the power, the love, and the authority of Jesus Christ in there. Straight like that. And guess who's going to do it too? Let me see your hands. Do y'all want this thing? Do y'all want this, bruh? We're going to change the world. I'm not playing, bruh. Sis, this ain't church, bruh. We the church. So be the church. She not playing. I will bless the Lord at all times. I just went to the doctor and found out that I got pregnant and I ain't supposed to be having sex. Oops. Am I going to praise him? Yeah, let's go there. Let's go there. My little brother just got shot here in the hospital. I will bless the Lord. My people just got in the car crash and they love one critical condition. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. This is lifestyle. This is lifestyle. It's not religion. You understand? And as we look at it like that, and we really take God's word as what it is, an eternal truth. Other people got beliefs, y'all. We got truth. Do y'all understand that? Truth is different than what you just believe. Or a fact. Because a fact can be disputed. Fact is on earth, if you throw something up, it's going to come down. That don't happen in space. And they got anti-gravity technology. So that changes that fact. Does that make sense? But the truth is Jesus is God. There's no discussion. There's no discussion. So what? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Let's go. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Let's go. I sought the Lord and he heard me. One more time, y'all. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. All my fears. We all got fears in here. That's why we stand in God. You know what that scripture said that brother read earlier? It said, could you turn that out right quick while he please? When you finish. 2 Corinthians 5, what you 17? Watch this, y'all. Hallelujah, God. Fill her up, God. Work in her situation even now. Dispatch the angels, God, to deal with every sickness in the name of Yeshua, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. I stand in agreement with her heart's cry by way of the Holy Ghost in the name of Yeshua, according to Matthew 18, 19. God, anything that we touch and agree on prayer, as we ask in your name, it will be done of our Father who is in heaven. Hallelujah. Read it, please. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All right, one more time. Read it word for word. Like, slowly, though. Watch this. Therefore, if any man be in Christ... Stop. Therefore, if any man be in Christ... He's a new creature. In Christ. Now, therefore, there is no condemnation to them. They say the same thing, right? That are in Christ Jesus. We stay in Christ Jesus by prayer, praise, worship, relationship, fasting. Living this thing. Do y'all get that? Not just say, oh, I'm a Christian, but they see no fruit. No fruit. So let's get some fruit. Let's go watch this. <clears throat> verse 6 and verse 7 of Psalm 34. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him. They saved him out of all his troubles. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him. And saved him out of all his troubles. That's the correlated scripture of uh, Ecclesiastes 7.3. 
And let's put it together right here. Remember what it said? Somebody said it. I know I ain't. Let me go back right quick. Sorrow is better than laughter. Sorrow is better than laughter. Why? Because when you're sorrowful, you're broken. And watch what this say right here. Write this down, please. I promise this scripture will change your life. You meditate on it. Psalm 34, verse 18. Write it beside or draw an arrow to correlate or bring together Ecclesiastes 7, verse 3, and Psalm 34, 18. I'm just building a foundation by the Spirit of God and your spirit or soul in which you will understand that it will not always at all be easy for them that truly love Jesus Christ and chasing after him. I'm not saying you won't have a good day, take the chariot to the pop, or go to Disney World, or go on a cruise, or ask to get the ride in the Bentley. I ain't saying none of those things won't happen. But what I'm understand, what I'm what I'm trying to impress upon you is to always keep in the back and forefront of your mind as a true Christian believer, you are a soldier and a warrior on the battlefield for an eternal war. For your soul and the soul of others. And that at any time Satan can start tripping. Does, does that make sense though? Really? Because I mean, for real, things was just good for me. I just got another opportunity to get in the video. I just got this thing happened over here and possibly about to be on the radio again and all these. But I got uh, uh, warfare stuff going on too. The people that posed to love me the most, you dig what I'm saying? So am I going to worry or stress over that or I'm going to keep running? Keep running. You better run for it, run for it, run. <laughs> for real. <clears throat> So when the scriptures say sorrow is better than laughter, watch what is, watch this right here. Watch, 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 watch. Sorrow is better than laughter. Look at Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. There you go right there. And look, save if such <clears throat> as be of a contrite or crushed in spirit. I literally felt some shift like this up here when she started screaming in tongues. I felt it. Boom! I'm like, whoa, there you go. You understand that? So a level of brokenness will bring you closer to God than you've ever been. What's today? Um, Wednesday. Monday went through some Monday night. Man, man, I was pissed, man. I'm trying to tell you I was pissed. I went to sleep. I just repented. I ain't want to go to sleep on that anger. Be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath or your anger. So I laid down. I was meditating on God and all that, just talking to him. Hurt. I was hurt, man. Woke up in the morning. Got on my <clears> face. <throat> let me tell y'all. It went but 20 minutes. A fervent prayer. In the place of brokenness that I was in, man, I, I, I felt the atmosphere shift in that joint. It started getting cold and everything. I really showed. I started feeling glory started coming in that jump. Deliverance took place. Why? Because I was so broken over what just happened to me and I didn't snap. I didn't curse. I didn't as much as I wanted to. Just curse. Bam! But I didn't. And that's how you get stronger in love. Because that's what we about to jump right into. The determining factor of your walk with God. The determining factor of you walking as a son and or daughter in God. The love. So as I stayed in love as much as I wanted to curse, my flesh wanted to just, woo, and them demons wanted to take over, boy. I said, no, not today. And when I woke up, God showed up in my living room. According to Psalms 34, 18. So the more I do his will, the more Satan act up. But I made up in my mind, what's the worst that's going to happen? You going to kill me? Great. That's my ticket. You see the mindset change? Mm -hmm. Are you a Christian because you got a sticker on your car? You got a, you're a Christian because you come to Bible study on Wednesday and church on Sunday? Or are you a Christian because you're a follower of Christ who is anointed? And you're going to walk in love and you're going to do the things that he called us to do. Mindset change. Mindset change. That's all I, that's all I want to do is insight change in your life. So when you go home and you get on your face before God, you say, God, I need that fire. I need you to stir up my soul and spirit, and whatever it is that you put inside me, I want you to unlock it so I can tear this place up for your glory. 
Because when you really begin to see this from my standpoint, you'll see that nothing else matters. When Russia and China do come, they're taking everything anyway. <clears throat> when they start locking up the Christians for real, then what? This is reality. But if we don't grasp a hold of it now, when it do come, we're in trouble. So the preparation of the soul, understanding the level of brokenness, understanding where brokenness will get you. Because you ever see what the scripture said, the meek shall inherit the earth? Have you ever looked up the word meek? Let me see your hands. Have you ever looked up the word meek in the Strong's Concordance? What does it mean? No, 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 wait, wait, wait. What does it mean? Uh, it said humble. Ooh. It said what? Humble. What else? Obedient. Obedient. You know what else it said? Depressed. Whoa, cousin. Depre depressed. Because you're in such a place of brokenness consistently, you ain't one of the happiest people in the world. I'm not saying that the God won't bring you joy because it's a difference between joy and happiness. Did, did, you understand, did you know that? Did you know that? It's a real difference between joy and happiness. Joy is something that internal, you just, ooh, for sure. Happiness is, I just got paid today and I got $1,500. But now I just smashed my car. You think I'm happy now? I'm happy I just got some bags. I go in the house and my wife started tripping. You think I'm happy now? Happiness is depending upon the circumstances. Joy is something eternal, which is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Don't ever think there's something wrong with being happy, but don't make being happy your main goal in life. Because that's an aspect of your emotions, and it can send you to hell. Question, yes? When you're broken, how do you know if you have joy? Or can you have both? What, brokenness and joy? Yeah. Yeah, I got joy now, but I'm broke. Well, how <laughs> Joy is something, the joy in my heart to understand that I really believe God and that I thank him and I lean on his grace and that ultimately I'm going to heaven. And if I keep on pushing forward in him, the joy of the Lord is my strength. That's the only way Marquis made the joy of the Lord, of the Lord, which means the aspect of just like the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, kindness, meekness, all these things, nine fruits. The fruit is the evidence of relationship. <laughs> The fruit of a woman having a child, the fruit is the evidence that she has sex, married or unmarried. So the fruit that I have a relationship or some level of oneness with Jesus Christ by way of his Holy Spirit showed the joy that's in my life. Even though I'm going through hell right now, do you see it? No. You see fire, you see tenacity, you see determination because I'm not playing with Satan. If I be in a car accident and night, pray for me. Just send me something. Don't come see me. Don't come see me. That's just how I carry it. I'm different. I just am. I just am. So I don't want you to go and walk around being sulking and depressing, man. <laughs> but you walk around like, I know who I am. I understand what I'm going through. But I know ultimately my purpose is getting home to my dad. That's it. The only reason Jesus came down here was to get us back home. To destroy the works of the devil. That's what his purpose was. So as you grab a hold of that and utilize these principles, these are all helpful principles with stuff I'm going through right now to show you the truth of the matter according to this. I got to paint this picture, y'all. I'm a watchman, man. Ezekiel 33, go look it up. What did it say? This book is illegal. In 52, who said hmm? Where your head? See, this is what I'm saying. Most people do not understand the severity of our lifestyle. The Bible is illegal in 52 countries. And it's coming here. So the only way that we can endure, because you know the scripture says, he who endures to the end shall be saved. Because many people going to fold. So I always say, don't don't let it be you. Don't let it be you. You feel me back there? 
Because when we understand who God is, we understand who we are, we understand our place in him, we understand how to make it. This is how you make it. I know it's heavy. But even the place of mental brokenness right now will position you to cry out to God even more. My brokenness when I laid before him Monday morning, Monday morning, it ushered him in like, like that. When I really told him, literally talking as if I know that my God who is in heaven, who is my father, he hear what I'm saying. And I said, Father, I miss you and I hate this place. Then I felt the power in the atmosphere. And I just began to weep. Really began to weep. And I felt his presence. I just felt that love. I just felt that peace just sit on me. That's relationship. Relationship. You feel me? Watch this. Love. We're going in love and we're going we're gonna to take it from there. Thank you, Lord. Father, right now, I ask for your peace, God, for my brothers and sisters, Lord, for this message is weighty and it is heavy. God, I ask that you will give them peace in the name of Yeshua, precious Holy Spirit. I ask that you will touch them right now. I'm going to give y'all a quick, because I can see this is crushing y'all. I understand, though. Father, I just thank you for the peace of God that touches them, God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I'm going to play one of my favorites. In Jesus' name. It's back to soaking music real quick when I tell you about love. As you begin to listen to stuff like this, from real anointed people of God, cut off the Jay-Z, cut off the whoever else that I know somebody else that I'm listening to, I ain't going to beat you up. I'm just telling you what it is. Instead of having demons coming through the speakers, get some coming through the speakers. This is the stuff that I play that literally begins to change the atmosphere in my home. When all hell is breaking loose. You understand? If you really want to see God show up, humble yourself before him in repentance. Confess your sins. Ultimately, I don't care what it is. Porno, smoking weed, getting drunk, lesbianism. It doesn't matter to me. Confess it unto him wholeheartedly and then come to him. Begin to praise him and worship him. Truly worship him, write that down. I listen to this song every single day. Every single day. And the atmosphere changes in your house. And the real Lord of heaven shows up in your house by his spirit. That's what you want. Because that's how you develop intimacy. God desires intimacy. That's why in the scripture it say, Depart from me, you working at iniquity. I never knew you. But Lord, we did this in your name, we did that in your name, we did this. In I never knew you. And the word knew is of, which it describes of recognition, of experience, and as unity as a man and a woman. So when you begin to know God, pray to him and say, Lord, teach me your ways. Reveal yourself unto me. Let us become one, O oh God. You feel me? See, it's working already because they hearing me, but they with God right now. You got to let them in. You got to let them in. For real. That's the level of intimacy where you're not just doing this junk. You're not just showing up because you think, oh, I'm supposed to go on Sunday or they going to think where I'm at. You're doing it because you understand that you are a literal seed of God placed on this planet to fulfill his will just as Jesus Christ was and you're going back home. And then in due time, you come right back down this jump. And you reign for a thousand years with Jesus Christ. And then whatever comes after that, we don't even know. Who cares? That's how Marquise thinks. So I give my mind over to him because I don't want to think about the stuff that I would normally think about. Let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. Let's get victory in our life. And it comes of the healing of the heart. I just want everybody on the sound of my voice, repeat this prayer, write this prayer so that you can understand and pray this prayer every day till you see the literal change in your life. Because one thing I know, two things for certain, Every last one of y'all that's been broken or traumatized. That means the soul is shattered. I'm going to speak on this quickly and I'm going to speak on love. 
That means the soul has been shattered. The soul as we understand the inner man, the mind, the will, the intellect, the emotions, the desires, the affections, the appetites. One more time. You got to understand who you are. So you can understand how to fix and how to operate. The soul is broken in the majority of people. How is the soul broken? Well, first you understand you three parts, spirit, soul, body. We always hear that like we think we know it all. Like, yeah, we are But let's really get an understanding of that. Spirit belongs to God, sent from God. That's that energy force, that, that, that's that life. He breathed the breath of life into it, the spirit. Then you got the soul, the mind, the will, the intellect, the emotions, the desires, the appetites, the affections. Or what these new ages call consciousness. But that's our consciousness. That makes you who you are. We attach names to consciousness and bodies. Does that make sense? When you know, I know why he by his soul. I see his body, but I know him by his soul. Mind, will, intellect, emotions, appetites, desires, affections. Soul. So when the soul is shattered or broken or fractured, <laughs> Doorways are open for demonic spirits to indwell you. Excuse me. I just love how God do it. Even when I'm ministering, he delivers me right in front of you. It's called relationship. I got to have it, man. I ain't got nothing else, bro. I ain't got nothing else on this planet, for real. I love y'all. I love my mom. I love everybody. But ultimately, ultimately, his grace all I got. That keep me going. For real. The soul is shattered and it is fractured by trauma. You could have been raped or molested when you was a child. That's a big one. That's a big one. <laughs> I ain't know how many people get molested. People I ain't even think of. I got molested when I was young. Oh, wow, for real. I talked to this. I got molested. Wow. That shatters the soul. I ain't got no glass here. Even if I did, I wouldn't break it. But imagine dropping a glass or a plate back in the day and you see pieces go everywhere. That's what happens to our inner person, the soul. And the brokenness in your life will allow you to operate in ways that a normal, true, fully whole Christian would not act. I'm going to say that again. The broken soul of a person would cause you to act in ways that you normally would not act as a fully whole Christian. The brokenness of a person causes you to lash out at people when they just say something to you. The brokenness of a person will cause a person to start tripping just for nothing. Because these spirits get in and you develop multiple personalities. Xavier, did you know you can meet a person and never know who the real person is? Because since you've known them, you've been talking to a demon. <laughs> I can know you for 25 years. I know you since you were five. But I never knew the real you. I'm talking to a demon all these years. That's a tough pill to swallow. So as we begin to pray this prayer, I'm going to I'm 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 go before the Father again. And then I'm going to you to repeat this prayer after me. Because I've been broken. I've been broken. My parents were divorced before I got, uh, before I was born. That's a way to get broken. Your mama might not have really wanted you. She got pregnant. She ain't mean to. One night stand. That's a way to get broken. Yeah. Or your daddy might not have wanted you, even though he was still with your mama. Spirit of rejection. That's a way to get broken. Your boyfriend raped you. That's a way to get broken. Your best friend turned on you, that's a way to get broken. There's plenty of ways. The girl who you take care of while you in that rack over here giving it up to everybody, that's a way to get broken. Folk in my house that I pay the bills for, that's a way to get broken. That's when you let that anger spirit in and he bring his brothers. Rage, bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment, murder. That's a way to get broken. Or you get robbed. That's a way to get broken. Or people steal from you. That's a way for the soul to break in many pieces. But watch this. This is going to help change your life. 
I'm going to say the prayer, but I'm going to give you the scripture real quick. This is how God did me. When I'm in there broken last night, he took me right there. I won't even think about that scripture. Hallelujah, God. See, regardless of what you think right now, this music is doing something to your soul. I'm trying to tell you. This music comes from heaven. If you have never heard of Kimberly and Alberto Rivera, she's a prophetic singer. She literally said, God sings through this woman. Deep things, secrets, and mysteries, bro. I'm going to give you another song. Watch that jump. When I was going through yesterday, I was playing the song. I will not even think about it. And he told me stuff, and it shook my very core, and I started crying. <laughs> Music. Watch what you listen to. Watch what you eat. If you're trying to go to the next level, I got to get it. I got to get it. I got to get it. Hallelujah, God. Mahe kusia kuhra mahe kisi. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. Write this down. And I'm going to give you the other one so you can meditate on these scriptures. Isaiah 61 verse 1 and Luke 4 18. My bad. I'm going to say that fast. I'm going to give you three scriptures. Where I don't care what you do tonight or tomorrow. Study and meditate on these three scriptures. Because this prayer that I'm going to give you is one of the most important prayers of your life. For real. Because we are all broken. We've all been broken in some way, shape, form, or fashion. And God desires to make us whole. Amen? Three scriptures. Luke 4, 18. Luke 4, 18. Hallelujah, God. Oh, Jesus. 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 Isaiah 61, verse 1. Hallelujah, God. Psalm 147, verse 3. Psalm 147, verse 3. Please, family. I need to do it more myself, but I read them and I know what they say because I actually utilize it in my prayer. But I want you to read these jumps. Read these scriptures. And another thing specifically, especially scriptures like these, Read them out loud so that your spirit man can hear it. We must read them out loud so that the spirit can hear it. Why? Because faith come back hearing. and hearing about them. Even though I was going through it, sitting on the couch at one whatever in the morning, I began to read this scripture and I could literally feel it hit me, bro. I was astounded. I began to feel better like that by reading it. I'm going to read it to you. Isaiah 61, I'm going to read that when I come back. But I want to I want to show you exactly what I read and literally begin to feel it hit me in the midst of all that I was going through. The oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Boom, I felt it. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Boom, I felt it. I started getting weak. I'm about to start crying. I read it again. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And I just sat there for a minute like, this word is, this word really is, it's real, bro. This John is living, bro. Have faith in his word. We got to. This is eternal, bro. Sis. <laughs> not this cell phone. Not these shoes. This is eternal. Verse 61, verse 3 is what I read. But I'm going to read verse 61, verse 1 right now. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Excuse me. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. There it is. Unto the meek. Unto the meek. The, he has sent me to bind up the broken heart. There you go right there. If you think that's just a figure of speech we use, no. It's real. <laughs> He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty. He wants us free to proclaim liberty to the captives. How many of us in here have been held captive by the fears, by the porno, by the drugs, by the women, by whatever? He wants us free. Come on, man. What's the last part? My Bible ain't closed, Jesus. And the opening of the prison to them 
that are bound. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. We got to keep reading that scripture until it gets so far down in our soul. It don't matter what we face. We know it's true because it is true. It is true. We got to start eating this here. Real talk. Because the time coming when they ain't going to be here. But you know, in China, at one point in time, if a person got caught with one page of the Bible, it would boil, boil the hot water down their throats. We take it for granted. We take it for granted. Um, sister right here, I'm really connected with you. Could you read Psalm 147, verse 3, please? Yes, you, ma'am. With the um, camouflage on. She came ready for war. Straight up. <laughs> I, but I, I'm not saying that to be funny. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. Because all we've been doing is getting training in this joke. Psalm 147, verse 3. Hallelujah, God. Fresh fire, fresh oil on your people, oh God. Get them eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches. I rebuke every spirit of fear right now. Every spirit of self-righteousness in the ear right now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of accusation in the ear right now in Jesus' name. I break your power, demon. The living blood of the Lamb is against you. You found it? Please read that. Hold on, let me turn it down a little bit. Oh. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Go ahead. Psalm 147, verse 3. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. One more time. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth, uh, bindeth up their wounds. He healeth. That's what it come down to. I trust in him to heal us. I'm about to pray. Repeat these other few words after me. Write them down, or just study those three scriptures and incorporate it in your prayer. Because I pray them daily, and I need to pray them even more throughout the day. You know how you just keep worrying God, worrying God, worrying God, you know what I'm saying? Because I need my heart to be healed. I'd have been through some stuff, and I'm sure all y'all have. And until we're completely whole, we can only operate to certain levels. Don't get me wrong, listen to what I'm saying. It's not like you won't be successful as a Christian. But until you're completely made whole, Amen. that's when we reach the full. We got to have the fullness. I need the fullness. I don't know what you want. I'm telling you what I want. If I get a nice house, that's fine. I don't care. If I get a nice car, that's fine. I don't care. I need the fullness of God up in me, y'all. Straight up. Because I know what's coming. I know what's coming. And I'm a son. You? I'm a son. Of God, an elect of God, and I really believe that. And I don't care what you tell me. It got to sink deep into you. That you're not just a person that goes to Bible study. You're not just a person that goes to church on Sunday. Because the opposition coming from your family, from your wife, from your husband, from your children, from your job, the opposition is coming. And the more we are made whole, we can stand. That's what it comes down to, standing, preparing. If you missed it, <coughs> we are preparing operational warriors to endure resistance. That's what we're doing right now. We're not having Bible study. This is not Bible study. This is training. We are preparing operational warriors to endure resistance. All of you ought to have shields, swords, helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, gospel of the preparation, excuse me, preparation of the gospel of peace. What's the most important piece of that arsenal? Let me see who know. Bam. Of what? That's all you got. You might come out your shoes. Your helmet might start falling to the side and flailing. You might even drop it. Oh, I had to drop the sword, bro. They cut my belt. I'm standing out here naked on the battlefield. But as long as I got wherewith he will be able to stand. Oh, that's all. All the fiery darts for the wicked. For the wicked. She read 147 verse 3. God heals our hearts, family. 
God hears our hearts. Here's the prayer. I'm going to pray to him first, and then I'm going to say the prayer one time so you hear it. Then you can follow me on the next time. You get that? I'm about to go before the Father. Then I'm going to pray it one time. Then <coughs> you can pray behind me. And then in your own spare time, just read and study those scriptures so you said specifically and incorporate it every day in your prayer and watch how your life begins to change. Stuff that used to piss you off, it don't piss you off as much. You feel me? Stuff that used to make you mad, it don't make you mad like that no more. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and praise you. I thank you for my brothers and my sisters, oh God. I remit the sins of everyone under the sound of my voice. Lord, your presence is still here, God. And we thank you for it. Hallelujah, God. Wash us, Jesus, in your blood. I repent for any sin I may have committed, God. Knowingly or unknowingly, God. Father, I enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. God, I thank you for all that you've done and I bless your most holy name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you will heal my broken heart. Bind my wounded soul. Lord, put me back together. And make me whole. Let's go. Father, I ask that you will heal my broken heart. Bind my wounded soul. Put me back together. And make me whole. Lord Jesus. Heal my broken heart. Make it personal as if Jesus hears what you're saying. This is not a game. Make it personal as if the king of kings literally hears your prayers and you know that he does. Them that come to God must first believe that he is and he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. Lord Jesus, heal my broken heart. Bind my wounded soul. <laughs> Put me back together and make me whole. Lord Jesus, heal my broken heart, God. Find my wounded soul, Lord God. Put me back together and make me whole. Oh God, hallelujah, God. Just worship Him right quick. Just just worship him. Just worship him. Just worship him. Just worship him. He's doing something now. If you don't see, he's doing something now. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. We worship you in spirit and in truth, oh God. For your healing power, for your tender loving worship, God. Hallelujah, God. Your faithfulness, God. You alone are worthy to be praised. You are worthy. 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 You are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, you are worthy through the midst of my sin, through the midst of our unfaithfulness, through the midst of our disobedience, through the midst of our unwillingness, oh God. Your hand of grace rests upon us. And we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, God. Most eternal God of ages. Most high and lofty one. You are God. You are God. Hear the cry of your people, oh God. Hear the cry of your people, oh God. Hear the cry of your people, oh God. There's healing taking place in this room right now. There's healing taking place in this room right now. The Lord is dealing with issues that you had since you were a child.
continue the work that I started in you. I will continue the work that I started in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Father, move on behalf of your children. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Breathe fresh fire, fresh wind, oh God. Life in this place in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Your heart's crying. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, God. Healing. There is healing in this room. There is healing in this room. There is healing in this room. Hallelujah, God. We thank you that you hear our cry. We thank you.
said briefly, about three minutes, I'm going to speak on love and we out of here. God moved in this joint tonight. God moved in here for his people tonight. So as you begin to go and teach and preach, you be sensitive to what he is doing, not what you want. There's nothing wrong with getting the word. Feel me. There's nothing wrong with getting the word. But y'all hurt. Do you understand that God's people are hurting? Ministers of the gospel. Be sensitive to him. It's his show. This ain't the Marquis show. Be sensitive to him. He know what needs to be said. He know what needs to be prayed. He know what needs to be played. For him to come in. For him to come in. I knew once I got the text, it was on. Once I got the text, I knew it was on. I said, okay, God. Let's go. This is my purpose. This is why I was created. If you do not know the absolute reason why you were created, seek him this week. Seek him that you know your purpose. 
He told me save the young, save the youth. He told me that five, six years ago. So I know that. <clears throat> then he began to reveal unto me different giftings or offices that I stand in. Even before I was ordained by man, he already told me. That's a relationship. Get with God and say, Father, who am I? Don't be afraid. I'm not trying to control you when I had you to say that because I want to spark something that your soul will hear it. And your inner man. So y'all that won't hear earlier, I had them say, who am I? So now I will ask you to say, say to yourself, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? I'm a royal priesthood for real. My kids are chosen generation for real. I'm an elect of God for real. So as you know who you are, the circumstances you go through will matter less and less. Small things to a giant, sis. God wants us to get bigger in love because it covers a multitude of sins, bro. When they start tripping, when the police start tripping, when the Department of Homeland Security start tripping, when your wife or your mama or your cousin or your sister or your brother get ready to turn you in and save their own soul, love. The determining factor, I'm going into it right now. <laughs> this is a revelation he gave me as soon as I read it. Love is the determining factor of perfection. Oh, smack. Yeah, is that phone? I thought I heard that one. Love is the determining factor of perfection. Amen. Watch this. Come on, go get it. Here go the scriptures. Write these down. If you don't meditate on nothing else, meditate on the healing of the heart scriptures, Psalm 147.3, Isaiah 61.1, Luke 4.18. Read them with fervency. Read it like God really... Put him spirit into a man to write that. And you know that these words coming from God and that they are eternal and that they will change your situation. Change your perspective and perception on how you read the Bible. That these stories actually occurred. And if that, if you see these, I hear the music. Who cares? That th these stories that actually happen, put yourself in the position. Why? Ain't nothing new under the sun. If God took a whole nation of people out of Egypt and fed them, he could do it for us when it get real. Amen. For real. If he fed Elijah with a bird, he could do it for Marquise if I'm out there on the run. I done put in work. I've been preaching. I've been teaching. I've been doing whatever he needed me to be. And now the Department of Homeland Security and the feds and all them chasing me because they know I'm going to spit that fire regardless. And now I'm running and I'm hiding them by a tree. And it's been three days and I'm like, God, I've been hunting, I've been trying, but I'm hungry. And he said, I got you. <laughs> and then a bird just come in with a, a sandwich or something. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, oh, Lord, there's some ranch too. <laughs> and I got the ranch too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he come in with a purple Arizona. An eagle dropped that zone. Like, ooh, ooh, kill him. Now we're talking. Why can't he do that show? You know what I'm saying? Chick fil A, see, we, my kid and I'm going to say, Oh, <laughs> Lord, I need some of that Polynesian sauce. Oh, damn, we, we in there. We in there. We needed some laughter because it was real thick in here. But, uh, but for real, though, real talk, though, y'all. This is eternal, man. This is eternal, y'all. This is the essence of who we are. Don't let nobody tell you King James was a faggot. It's been written 12 times. I don't want to believe that. <laughs> Oh, bad. I know people that call themselves Christians, but they don't believe this. That's true. That's true. Bro, you wailing, bro. You wailing. Just tell them, my kid, I don't know what it means, but my kid said you wailing. Just tell them, you wailing, bro. You're a fraud. For real. Just tell them you're a fraud. I mean, I love you in Jesus' name. Praise God. You know, but you, you faking, bro. You faking. Word. Love. Love. Oh, no, I heard it. I thought it was recording. Yeah, he had, he had called it too. Okay. It's been recorded, praise God. Man, God, woo, God showed up in this job. God showed up in this job. All right, let's do this real quick because I kept hearing briefly, briefly, briefly. And y'all been beat up enough. But this training, who in the military here? Hey, nobody. 
Well, you know, it's okay. I did nine years in the army, you know what I'm saying? Reserve, praise God. But uh, it changed me. It changed me as a person. I went from civilian to soldier. That can't be undone. You understand? Though I get lazy and stuff at times as a person, you know, your civilian life, me being a soldier cannot be undone. So you're going from a pew filler <laughs> to a soldier in the Lord's army. Yeah. Different yeah. mindset. You look at your problems different. Oh, baby, I got my back with her. Come here, mom. No, you don't even. Father, in the name of Jesus. I ain't playing. My mother-in-law and that John, I said, my leg hurt. I, she was jacked up. She sitting up there playing, barely moving. Oh, I fought my flesh, stepped in the spirit. I prayed for it. God showed up. Amen. Forget your flesh. And this is the thing about it. I knew something was going to happen. Because soon as she started talking, I started to feel the heat. I'm like, oh, it's going down. So I had a choice to make. Watch this. I had a choice to make. Say, I don't feel like doing it because I'm ready to go. And she kind of taking up more time than I plan on being here. Or do God's business as a soldier and pray for the woman. So that her belief change and shift. And then later on, it just keep on multiplying. Amen. So I prayed for her. Father name. I said, you already know what's up. Come on. Because I prayed for her before. Killing my flesh, cause I ain't, you know. So I said, Father Jesus, now I just thank you, praise you that you hear me when I pray. That's belief. Without faith, it's impossible to please. So don't even play with it. God knows you can talk all you want in front of me. God knows if you believe or not. The demons know whether or not you believe, bro. So when I said, Father Jesus, name I thank you, praise you that you hear me when I pray. Enter your gates with thanksgiving, your course with praise. That's how you biblically approach God. If you never knew that one. Into your gates with thanksgiving. Write it down, please. I ain't saying he won't hear you when you're praying to him because he's over there. But to technically, according to the scripture, approach the throne. I enter your gates with thanksgiving. I enter your courts with praise. Say it, say it again. Somebody grab, go to that real quick. See, this Holy Spirit, I... If, I feel it too. When I was walking through this joint, my hair started standing on end. It's angels all in this joint, like real talk. Like the peace of God is in this joint, so heavy right now. What is it, ma'am? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. Woo! Into his gates! It's saying it because it means it. Is it Abraham? I keep forgetting. Is it Abraham or Moses that built the first temple with the tents? Moses? It was Moses. Moses? No, it was Moses. Because Aaron had the staff that budded, the rod that budded. That's why we got to stay in this word. You know what I'm saying? Watch this real quick. If you remember what the scripture said, it said God showed him what it looked like. Well, well. Who said it? Say it again. God showed Moses what it looked like where? In heaven. So he did what? Made a recreation of it. Go through it. Outer court. Inner court. Holies of holies. One more time. You like that, right? That's what it is. Outer court. Inner court. Holies of holies. I enter your... Gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. Holy Spirit take you into the Holy of the Holy. You don't just go in there. That's when the true worship comes. And you literally, by faith, you literally, I don't know how it all happens in the spiritual. You in there with God. We coming high. We going higher. We going higher. So when you pray to him now, just say it. Lord, I enter your gates with thanksgiving and I enter your courts with praise. Or oh, Father, in Jesus, I thank you and praise you in the name of Jesus. That's how I pray now. Utilize this stuff. Don't just hear it once and don't use it. Use the joke. Father, in Jesus, I just thank you and praise you in the name of Jesus. I thank you and I praise you in the name of Jesus and start your petition. And really believe and hear that he hears you. Some of y'all praying prayers, but y'all shooting all over here. Believe that God, as much as this camera looking at me and they probably record it. I don't care. Lock me up. It won't be the first time. Whatever. 
As much as I believe that they watching me, or if they want to, they could turn it on. I believe that Yahweh, Jehovah, sitting way up in whew, eternity, hears me, little old me. And I see him move on my behalf. I see him move. So if you pray with that fervency, like God in Jesus' name, I thank you and praise you that you hear me when I pray. And I ask that you would do this and this and this. In Jesus' name, it is so. And then you just wait. Sometimes it happen like that. Sometimes it'll wait a little longer. Why? Because it's in his time and when he released. Oh, I don't, Marquise, at this day, May 7th, which I'm not even going to say it, don't matter. At, at today, I'm not ready for Lord Save My City to be global. But it still is global. See that? See the difference? I, at this current moment, is not ready for my clothing line to be fully global. I'm not there yet. But soon as I stay in prayer, stay in praise, stay in worship, read, learn my craft, and do what I'm supposed to do, study, show myself approved under God. Not just the Bible. That's what they told you because they, they lack understanding. Not just the Bible. Everything else that is in line with God's will for your life. I won't be a carpenter if I'm reading about plumbing. What king goes to war if he don't first count the cause? I got to know what I'm getting into. Give him something to work with. Real quick and we go into love because somebody need to hear this. I don't know who it's for, but it's for somebody. Jesus ain't called nothing out of thin air at the um, 5,000 people. He said, go find me somebody with a lunch. Right? Or, true or not true? Five loaves and two fish. And the scripture said he took it. You got it, huh? He blessed it. He needed fed everybody. He needed <laughs> something to work with. Give him something to work with. Don't just say, I just trust God. But you ain't gave him nothing to work with. Mm. Noah trusted God and he built the ark. Mm. Joseph trusted God and he stored up the food. Give God something to work with. Two love scriptures and we out right now. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. This is absolutely, I really apologize, especially if we're supposed to be out here now. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. Oh, praise God. Because we were, if somebody, I feel somebody got some questions. I feel it. 543. Oh, yeah. Woo. Oh, the ghost be hot too, though, sometimes, man. Nah, sometimes, all the time. Sometimes, like, uh oh, Lord, here we go. You know what I'm saying? You start sweating. I mean, Jesus Christ. You get the sweating up there, John. You know what I'm saying? I was praying for somebody yesterday. I just started to feel the sweat. I'm like, ooh, Holy Spirit, I need an air conditioner to come with you or something. Can you just burn from the inside and breathe on the outside? So I'm staying for you know what I'm saying? Oh, Holy Ghost fire. Wind of God. Ooh, man, it's real out there, For real. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. We're going to talk about love. Now remember, watch this, y'all. This is going to blow your mind. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Because y'all know what makes the difference in how you read the word? Revelation. Revelation makes the difference. You can read till your eye go lazy. <laughs> Tell y'all just start drooping like, whoa, bro, hold on, Lord, what happened? Until it's revealed to you, it won't be as fruitful or powerful in your life. Don't stop reading it. Please don't do that. Read it out loud, even at a voice, long enough that you can audibly hear yourself. Because you believe yourself more than you believe anybody. What's that? You believe yourself more than you believe anybody. That's why those deep-rooted fears and lies that you've heard since you grew up consistently play in your mind when you're trying to move forward, that's why you never get nowhere. Because your subconscious filled with trash. That's why, according to this, we read, what the hell though? Romans 12, 2, be transformed. Battle renewing of your mind. So you literally, like the mask, you're transformed into another person. You'll be the same person you are today if you never read nothing different, you never study nothing different or whatever. You just hang around the same people, you'll be the same person. But if you read, study, and give yourself wholly to all those things that God called you, you will literally be a new person. Amen. Literally. 
I ain't the same Marquise as I was 2008, six years later. Completely, completely different. That's how we supposed to be. So watch this. <laughs> the revelation of what you're about to receive by God, because I'm going to give you this information, but I'm trusting God to give it to you as a revelation. Because some, a deep secret ready to be revealed. Because when I pray real time, I ask for Lord deep secrets and mysteries. I want the deeper things. Not the same thing Pastor talked about last week, last year, last month, last... You at Easter Sunday, and we're talking about the same thing we talked about five years ago. Bro. Nothing different. Like, all you did is wear a different color suit. Like, what is this? <laughs> oh, watch this. And the script, the, the, the main key here is love. We're talking about love. L-O-V-E. Watch this. Matthew 5, 43. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, and we see it's in all red, so who's speaking? Jesus. Word. Let's get that straight. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Whoa, time out, bro. Do you see the magnitude of what he's saying? How you love some? This is the test. This is the <coughs> this is the test of your true Christianity. When I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Watch this. Watch this. He built the foundation so he could put the house on it. Y'all ready for the house? Watch the house. That ye may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven. Before we go further, let's, 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 let's watch. Did you see that? It ain't like they saying it is. The church people, all you it ain't like they saying it is. Did you see how Jesus built that case as a lawyer? He said, you heard that it have been said that thou shalt love thy neighbor, hate thy enemy, but I say that you love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Why? How? That ye may be the children of your father, which is in heaven. Why? Because he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and send the rain on the just and on the unjust. Here it is. Great question, Lord Jesus. Because if you love, wherefore, if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? What reward do you get? It's easy to love somebody that love you. I'm dealing with this. Lord Jesus. Do not even the publicans the same or the sinners. Watch this. Here you go. And if you salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so. Here it is. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Hold on to that. Because this is the revelation he gave me and I'm going to share with you. As soon as I read it, he hit me when I said, wow, God, that is absolutely profound. Love, please write this down. Please write this one down. This is going to change the game. Love is the determining factor of perfection. Love is the determining factor of perfection. You will not be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect until you are made perfect in love. It's the determining factor. You want to hear some more proof? Let's go. Because this is the next scripture. And I'm done. As soon as I'm finished this, we're done. Write it down. Please. Meditate. I want you to learn how to meditate. Take a scripture, a passage, and go over it continuously. Just go over there so continuously. You just sit down. You can cut the lights off if you want. I do. I like to. I like it dark at times. You know, no noise. You just go over that scripture. 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 You just go over the scripture. And you, you, you just stay there for a minute. You say, hold on, Lord. Holy Spirit, what does this mean? Then shut up. And use these. 
Then you go over the scripture and that's your bust wide open. I'm telling you, I've done it. Some of the deepest things that God ever revealed to me happen like that. Or sometimes drive. Because you know when you're driving, you just kind of zone out anyway. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Subconscious kick in. You don't think when you drive. You just drive. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll be going over a scripture and going over a scripture and going over a scripture. I'm looking at the highway like I'm being hypnotized. I go over the scripture and it just explode. He open it up and I be like, oh my God! <laughs> what? That's what? <laughs> I want y'all to experience that. If you haven't. But I want you to continuously. We go from and faith to faith, faith to faith, glory to glory. So watch this. We finish it right here in 1 Corinthians 13. Which chapter, which scripture is that, y'all? That's the... Yes. <laughs> no. You know what I'm saying? All right, y'all. Here come the test right here. We finish it with this jump. Somebody's life has been forever changed tonight, bro. I see it. I see it. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 13. Here go the game changer. If you didn't believe what I said earlier about love being a determining factor of perfection, watch this. Verse 1. 1 Corinthians 13. Though I speak. So he ain't saying maybe. He's saying I do actually do this now. So right here, this whole book, this whole uh, chapter is going to test our Christianity. Watch. This is going to test our Christianity. This whole uh, chapter here. It, it might hurt your feelings. That's good. Because your feelings ain't God feelings. Ooh. Whoa, bro. We say stuff like that, man. <laughs> Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am becoming a sounding brass. <laughs> or a tinkling symbol. Wow. And though I have the gift of prophecy... And understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. And though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Charity suffereth long. And it's kind. I'm going to say love from here for Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly or rudely. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. That's a tough one, Lord. Think of no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity. But rejoiceth in the truth. Bear of all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. We're going to highlight that. We're going to come back to it. I'm going to finish. Love never failing. Love never failing. One more again. Love never is the key word. Failing. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail or cease. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But that, well, excuse me, but when that which is perfect or complete is come, speaking of Jesus in the kingdom, then that which is in part shall be done away. <laughs> Praise God. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also, even as also I am known. That's purely spiritual. That's what that means. That's purely spiritual right there. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is... It is the determining factor. 
determining factor of perfection. I challenge every last single one of you to make an effort every single day. You won't win every time. To walk in God's love. I don't care if you speak in tongues, bro. I don't care who you pray for and they got healed. I don't care how much money you gave to a homeless person. I don't care how many people you went to visit at a nursing home. I don't care. If we lack this, it means nothing. That puts everything in perspective. Because I go hard for God. Y'all already see that. But if I don't have love, Means nothing. Now your hands close your eyes. Father, excuse me. Most holy Father, we just thank you and praise you in Jesus Christ's precious name. Lord, your spirit has moved in this place today. And we thank you, God, that you really hear us. Lord God, even now, Lord, I ask in Jesus' name. That you will impart unto us your divine love, God. God, let it God, teach us how to love in spite of persecution, in spite of betrayal. Teach us how to love like you, Lord. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Teach us that love, God, the agape love. Teach us to let go of unforgiveness. <laughs> Teach us how to let go of bitterness, resentment, anger, hatred, murder, and rage. Oh, God. Continue the work of healing our broken heart and binding our wounded soul, God. Continue your work of putting us back together piece by piece and making us whole, God. Remove the veils from our eyes that we may see and behold your glory. Because some of us are here truly desire more of you. Oh God, give us the desires of our heart. And that's you. No material things, God. We need you. Intimacy. Intimacy, teach us for Ramasi, Koramasi. Teach us intimacy, Holy Spirit. You lead us into all truth. And the truth of the matter is we need intimacy. Unity with the Father. Unity with Yeshua Jesus. Unity with you, precious Holy Spirit. You are a person, not a thing. Holy Spirit, you are a person. Teach us how to love. Teach us how to yield. Teach us how to listen. Teach us obedience. Teach us. We must have you, God. Stir up the souls and the spirits of everyone under the sound of my voice, oh God. That they would chase after you like never before. Chase after destiny and purpose. In the name of Jesus. God, reveal yourself unto your people. Reveal yourself, Ramaseh, unto your people. God, touch the very depths of their souls. The very depths of their souls. Reveal all wickedness in their hearts. In my heart. Reveal it to us that we may sin, confess it, and deal with it. Because your scripture says the pure in heart shall see God. Only the pure in heart shall see God. So we thank you, God, that your hand of grace is upon our life. And even now we approach the throne of grace boldly in the time of need, oh God. Oh God, have mercy on us. 
Some of us in here struggling with sin that we have not been able to overcome. But we thank you for your hand of grace. We thank you that Jesus came to proclaim deliverance and to set free us captives. In Jesus' name, I speak life into everyone under the sound of my voice. I speak the very life that God has placed within me by His Spirit. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Them that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I speak life into my brothers and sisters. Healing, oh God. Healing, Lord. Lucio, healing angels, even now, oh God. Healing angels. To restore every person in here. Return virtue into every person in here. Hallelujah. Heal the bodies in the name of Jesus. I curse and break your power. I rebuke any and all spirits of infirmity under the sound of my voice. I rebuke you in the mighty name of Yeshua. I command you to unloose. 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 Loose your hold. Uproot yourself. Uproot yourself, foul spirit of infirmity. Uproot yourself in the name of Jesus. Come out of the bodies of these people. Every sickness, every disease, every virus, every bacteria, every infection, I break your power now through the living blood of Jesus Christ. And I declare healing. Healing. Healing right there in the name of Yeshua, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I speak life into the dead finances. I speak life into the dead finances. Lord, your scripture, your word says, you supply all, all of our needs according to your riches and glory, which is in Christ Jesus. Lord, bless the works of their hands, God. Bless the works of their hands, God. Bless the works of their hands, God, that they may be prosperous as they work unto your glory. The weight and pain of somebody is on my back right here. Let it go. Just let it go. Just let it go. Just let it go. Let it go. It's heavy right here. Let it go. It's okay. He is faithful. It's okay. Yes, yes, yes. It's okay. It's okay. Yes, God. Restore, thank you, Holy Spirit. Restore relationships. That's it. Restore relationships. Mothers and daughters. Mothers and sons. Fathers and daughters. Fathers and sons. I speak healing and restoration in your life right now in the name of Jesus. The relationship shall be stored, restored in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. The Holy One of God. Sisters and brothers, sisters and sisters, brothers and brothers. Restore relationship, God. I break and destroy the power of every God is so tight. In this place I suffer in that, Jesus' name. I suffer the ungodly soul tight in spirit right there in Jesus' name. Every last one of them be broken in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I ask that you would do all of these things, O oh God. According to your scripture, John 14, 14, Lord Jesus, Father God in heaven, my precious sweet Father, I ask that you would do it according to John 16, 23, and 24. And Lord God, according to Matthew 18, 19, as I touch and agree with any person in here in the spirit, if you agree, you must agree as an act of your own will to agree with me in the spirit. To every word that came out of my mouth concerning you, agree as an act of your will, according to Matthew 18, 19, Lord God of heaven, it is so.
get yourself together as you can, and it is our turn to move forward. Heidi Baker in Africa, she's been there for 20 years. She loves Jesus Christ for real. This is life, y'all. This is real. Everything that went forth in here, this is your life. This is real. Embrace it and get here. Amen. It was healing that took place here. Some of y'all burdens still on my back right now. I'm not complaining. This is what it is. Y'all going through some stuff. Continue praise. Continue worship. Continue to press into him. Come high, please. As a brother, I'm asking y'all, come on up. Amen? Amen. God bless y'all. Bless you. Uh, we will be having Bible study tomorrow. Um, and we will. Hey, I want to make another quick announcement. Um, Pastor said that um, um, we need to raise two hundred thirty-six dollars and seventy-five cents. So if y'all have anything to give, like that'll be very helpful. Just to let y'all know. What do you need it by? Um, he didn't say when, but. I guess give it to me whenever you can. Yeah. 
Alright, recording, this is it.